you know, uh, I was just a little uh, reflective on the title when it said innovative CSR strategies and uh, I was called upon to share with you what we do in our foundation. You know, actually, if you look at it, probably most of you present over here are coming from what we traditionally call as the CSR space, the NGO space, the, the working with the communities space. And in fact, if you look at the CSR bill, the last CSR Act, also essentially talks about CSR as if it's do-gooding with the communities. The fact of the matter is that communities are just one of our stakeholders. There are n number of stakeholders, starting with investors, the lender, the suppliers, the clients, the employees, the government, the environment. These are all stakeholders. Now, when you say corporate social responsibility, it is a responsibility of a corporate against all these stakeholders, of which working with the communities is just one little thing. Let me give you an example. I've seen in some of the airlines, just as the flight is landing, those stewards or stewardesses would go with a transparent little box asking for some contribution in it which goes towards some do-gooding project. But the same airline, when there is a landslide and a cloud burst in Ladakh and Leh, will put up the prices six times up. So they're robbing people to pay Paul. Where is the corporate social responsibility there? In a difficult area where people are stuck, you are raising the prices up six times, and then you are saying we are collecting money for some do-gooding somewhere. That's not corporate social responsibility. I'll have more to talk about it in the afternoon session if you happen to be there. But the point I'm trying to make is, please do not go out of this hall with the understanding that what I'm presenting here is the corporate social responsibility of the GMR group. It is not. So this was my disclaimer before I started. So let me now, since the agenda is that I share what we are doing under the name of corporate social responsibility, which is essentially working with the communities. That's all that the foundation is responsible for. There are many other areas of responsibility which we are not responsible for. So we are only one of the CSR arms. I often say CSR like an octopus. There are several arms to it. Working with the communities is just one arm. Okay. So we have you know, the, the, our first question was, okay, how do we structure ourselves? You know, you can talk about CSR, you know, India is a country with so many causes, you close your eyes, chuck a stone, it falls on a cause. You know, anything, you know, there, there are people doing with culture, with uh, poverty, health, uh, you know, physically challenged, and, you know, uh, th 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 there are zillions. You, you, you can just uh, not even count them uh, over a day. There are so many causes. But the problem is corporate resources are always limited. And if you pick too many causes, then you never get to see an impact, the bank for your buck. So it always helps if you are very focused on a few areas and go deeper into those areas. You know, everyone doesn't have to make a national impact. Great if Mr. Azim Premji or a Narayan Murthy can have a nationwide foundation. But not everybody is Azim Premji or Narayan Murthy who has made that kind of money. It is perfectly fine if we worry about the areas surrounding us and if every corporate does that across the country, the entire country is taken care of. Because often people say, oh, what is your impact? Oh, you're working only locally? It doesn't matter. There's nothing to be ashamed of working locally. We work only locally. But we work in 24 locations, Pan-India. And not only Pan-India, even abroad, if we have a project, we work with the communities surrounding them. And we have structured ourselves as a section, now it's section 8, it was section 25 once. And we have the foundation headed by the chairman himself. 
because it's close to his heart. That's the difference you will often see between family run businesses and professionally run businesses. In professionally run businesses, you have a lot of, you know, at least, maybe not today, but at least till 15 or 20 years ago, a lot of discussion on the boards. Is our job to be doing social do-gooding or is our job to maximize the wealth for the shareholder? Why don't we maximize the wealth for the shareholder and give big dividends and he will do his do-gooding? It's not our job, right? Except that, yes, before that we looked at only the philanthropic models where, you know, you build some mandirs or you build some schools and we know some very well-known philanthropists who have set up schools and temples and so on, but that is not the model that we talk about anymore. So, there, you know, when it comes to a vision, you know, a, 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 a family-owned business, the gap between the intent and translation is 24 hours. You don't have any song and dance, you don't need to wait for any big uh, clearances from AGM and so on for the spend. Except that now the corporate social responsibility has in many ways become the corporate legal responsibility because it has been put into the act. So the social, the, the voluntary part has been taken away. Now it is a more like a mandatory component that has been brought in, but that apart. So we have structured ourselves like this virtually for the last, what, 25 years, okay? So we are not very recent in this model. Our vision is to make a sustainable impact on the human development of underserved communities through initiatives in education, health and livelihoods and essentially working with the underserved communities around our project locations.